Good morning, everybody. Today is the first lesson of financial models, so I would like to introduce you about the course map of the whole unit that we need to cover during the course. So as you might see on the slide, so we're going to cover for nine chapters. And if you check it out onto the slide that I gave you the very detail of the unit name on each chapter. So as you see, the chapter one is going to be introduction of financial model, which is mean that we're going to try to focus onto the first chapter for today. And the second chapter is going to be sensitivity analysis, the trend line and regression analysis. And the chapter three, we come into the optimized linear. And chapter four, scenario analysis and the goal sick. And chapter five, we discuss some of the very basic financial calculation model based on the MBV, IRR. And chapter six, we discuss about the cost of capital model. And chapter seven, we cover the financial segment model. Chapter eight, we come into the valuations for stock price and the bond price. And the chapter 9 is going to be break-even analysis. So today, we come into that's the first unit of the, this module, Introductions of Financial Model. So before we discuss about that's the financial model, so I will give you the very brief definitions of the financial model. First, a financial model is designed to represent in mathematical terms the relationship among the variables of financial problem so that it can be used to answer the what-if questions or make projections. There are a lot of new terms to you, so it's kind of a little bit hard for you to comprehend completely the definitions of financial model. So to understand further and differ for the definitions, so I will show you the various simple example, and I want you to watch out here. So here, there's just a table that I want to present for you. So all the number here add a all the number here add a hypothetical data. So for example, before the Tet holiday, you intend that you can see the two countries to travel. First, China. The second one was Turkey. And there were some criteria for you to make the good, such a good decisions. So I will give you just the four criteria to help you to make the good decisions. The first of all is going to be the beautiful size. The second is going to be the budget. The third one is going to be the safety. And the number four is going to be the length of the time. So beautiful size. So as you consider the beautiful size compared to the other variables, so we think the beautiful size seem to be contributed a higher percentage to make decisions to travel to China. So that's why I put 30% for the beautiful size for both countries, which is mean that the beautiful size gonna comprise about 30% of your making decision to come to the place that you want to travel. And the second criteria is gonna be the budget. The budget is important criteria for you to make decision when you want to travel someplace, right? So as you see, the budget is going to attribute about 25%. The next one is going to be the safety. So you need to feel safe. You need to be safe in the place that you want to travel. So that's why the safety also consists of 25%. And the last but not least, the length of the time, which is mean that the length of the flight, the length of your stay there. So that's why you have to consider about that element. So you can see that here I just put 20% for the length of stay. So now, if we check it out, so I'm going to try to give you the proportion for each criteria, but now we need to rank and to mark each criteria based on the country. So for example, if we compare the Turkey and China, we can see that the beautiful size, the same like China, they are more, uh, more beautiful size compared to Turkey. So that's why I give the mark for China is 9. Okay, so I have the equation right now, just uh, to calculate, that is 9. Beautiful size is a mark for China, I calculate for China. So the China night time with the 30% of sizing. And if we look at to the budget, 
the budget of China seems to be a little bit less compared to Turkey. Okay, a little bit less, but maybe we can say so it's going to be the same. Seven, seven times what? Twenty-five percent. Okay, for China, this is the budget, and we check into the safety before the coronavirus. The China seem to be safer place to travel than the Turkey. It's a lot of the uh, the bomb and the terrorists. So that's why we consider that the safety in China seem to be better than Turkey. So that's why I mark the China eight. So we time with twenty five percent for safety. And the last but not least is land of the time because of course the China close to Vietnam. So that's why the lines of the flight gonna be shorter. So that's why we mark for the China gonna be higher than Turkey. So we get China six. We time with 20% of the land of safe. So after I put all of the variables data, data time with the proportion, and I have the whole equation here, and that's why I can have the result of the 7.65. Okay? So now I continue. I try to do it for Turkey. For the Turkey, as we compare for the beautiful size, not there are not many beautiful size compared to China. So that's why I get the, the Turkey gonna be A. We time with thirty percent of the proportions of the beautiful size in terms of their others among variables, and we time with that's uh, seven for the budget of the Turkey. Could be a, a little bit equal. The same with the China. So we time with twenty five percent here. All right, and continue with the safety. So Turkey, mm -hmm. so just a safety mark for the Turkey, just fine compared to China, all right? Before the virus, okay, before the coronavirus. So we time with 25%. And with blood, with the land of time, seem, it seems like Turkey farther compared to further compared to the China, to Vietnam, so that's why we get that uh, five, land of time. Because we have, we take more time on the flight in to Turkey than in China to China. So we time twenty percent. So we get this one gonna be six point eight, I suppose. So if we check the result, and you can see that this result give you the suggestion that okay, China seems to have the highest point compared to the Turkey, so you made decision to travel to China, all right? So here we go, we're gonna go to China, straight A, right? But unfortunately, at the end of the December, there was one case happens of the virus, coronavirus in Wuhan city, and that became the very chaotic, and it became just a serious problem right now, as you can might see, as you might see. So that's why the safety of China at the beginning, before the coronavirus, seemed to be eight, but now, because of the coronavirus, and we could not know what happened, what might happen in the future. So what the, that's why the safety of China before the virus outbreak, it's A, was A, but now it's gonna be oh, three, sorry. It's gonna be three, okay? It's gonna be very dangerous if you want to travel to China right now, right? So that's why the safety level come down. So it's my whole equations change. It's my all the result and to change your decision too. So at the beginning, you can call for the China 7.65, but now after the safety level adjusted based on the real situations, that's, we can see that the result gonna be six. Or, all right. So this, the renew result gonna be changed because of the safety level change. So if we compare to the Turkey right now, of course the, our decision change in the deviate based on the real situation right now. So as you just said, as you just might express it, and you can see that's uh, the way I demonstrate 
the whole data here and the variables. So you can see that all number might change in the future, and that's what we don't know. So thanks to the financial model, we use such a mathematical relationship between all of the variables here. We try to make it make sense in logical way, and then we find out that the result. Of course, everything gonna change in the future, and we don't know about that. But if anything change, we easily find out the new answer. So that's a way that we build up the financial model. Just we try to build up the spreadsheet to understand, to connect all the variables together in terms of the logical way. And that's why they're going to help you to make good decisions. All right? So this is an example that I just want to show it to you. But now it's your turn. I want you at home to try to connect all the variables uh, data into that uh, making sense uh, relationship. And I want you to practice with this data, data, okay? So, if you check it out here, if you check it out here, so I'm gonna show you, that, so this is an example that you need to do at home, as a homework, all right? So as you check here, this is the taxable income and the tax rate, okay? So, any relationship between the two columns here, tax rates of the taxable income and the tax rate, any relationship? Do you see any relationship between two, two columns? Okay, I'm going to try to represent it into the way that makes sense to you. And with that, with the support of the basic information, so that's why it's helped you to do the homework at home, okay? So, as you might know, that's about the personal income tax. And every country is going to have a different personal income tax bracket. And... Uh, here, is this a hypothetical data that in any country, all right? So I give you the data here for the range of the taxable income from zero to 8,025. The tax rate is going to be 10%, all right? And the second tax bracket is going to be 8,025, 32,550. It's going to be 50%, 15%, sorry. Okay, so now I just ask you the very simple and single questions. That if I earned, if I earned $5,000, if I earned $5,000, how much I'm going to pay in tax? If I earn $5,000, how much I'm going to pay for tax? So, if you look at the number, $5,000, so it's belong into the first bracket here. It's a belong to the first bracket, 8,000, 0 to 8,000, 25, right? So, with her, and if you check into the first bracket, the tax rate is going to be checked for 10%. So, that's why I take the 5,000 times with 10%. So, it's going to be $500. Okay, so this is going to be the tax I need to pay for the government, okay? So, the next questions I want to ask you, if I earn $10,000, how much I need to pay to the government for the personal income tax? So, if we check it, we see, oh, $10,000. We think that it's going to be look like exactly the same as $5,000. So, we say, oh, $10,000 is belonging to the second bracket here, right? You see the second bracket here? So, that's going to be the 15% tax rate. So, you think that, oh, $10,000 times 15%, so I'm going to pay $1,500. Okay, $1,500. Okay, I'm going to pay $1,500 to the government. But that's... This is, is a wrong answer. That's just not the money that you need to pay for the government. Okay, so I'm going to show you which one going to be the right one. So $10,000, because based on the, the, the rules of the calculated tax, so you need to fulfill your duty of the first bracket first. Okay, so you pay one by one bracket. Okay, one bracket to another bracket. You don't pay into that, sir. The, the, the rents is belong to your to your income okay so now we check it out we need to pay the full we need to fulfill the first bracket we need to pay for the first bracket we have to pay 
for the first purchases, which is mean that we pay eight thousand because ten thousand dollar more than eight thousand twenty five dollar. So that's why we have to pay maximum of the first brackets is eight thousand twenty five dollar. Ten with ten percent. Okay, all right, and then. We pay for the difference between ten thousand dollar with eight thousand twenty five dollar. The difference ten thousand dollar minus eight thousand twenty five. And with this one, with the difference here, we time with fifteen percent. Okay, so that's gonna be the tax we need to pay in total. So of course the number here, if you can collect, it's gonna be what you think less or more than one a thousand five hundred dollar. It's gonna be less a thousand five hundred dollar, okay? Because you need to fulfill the first duty to pay the the tax for the full for the top for the maximum uh, income that you earn for the first bracket, and you gotta pay the difference in the second bracket, okay? So that's the way that you can collect the personal income tax. So I want you go home and try to think about. That's so all the number in the data here. All the relationship gonna be connected. All the relationship gonna be diverged with each other. So that's why you can build up the mathematical equations. All right. And I want you to give me the answer that if I ask you, for example, how much money that you wanna earn, even fifty thousand dollar, and you put that into as so one cell of the Excel file. And you have to give me the result here, or I can say that's the output here, the output. So the output cell gonna be here, and the output cell gonna give you the immediate answer whenever, whatever number I'm gonna say. Okay, so that's gonna be that's a little bit challenging homework for you, but I heard that you try to solve it with all of your dedications. So thank you for listening to the lesson, and I hope that you enjoy it. And hope to see you guys soon in the next chapter. Thank you.